Today, I'm gonna to teach you guys how you can create this crazy radiant heat signature effect in Photoshop. My name is Evan Wynn. Welcome to 11% Tutorials. This effect is a really simple one to recreate, but before we get started, if you guys are new to this channel, please be sure to smash this like button and subscribe. It's free, all this content is free, so it'd really mean the world to me. Real quick, I do wanna give a big shout out to Intuitive Designs for inspiring this video. Definitely go check out his channel, really great stuff. All you'll be needing today is Photoshop and an image, and without further ado, let's dive right into the tutorial. All right guys, so now that we're finally in Photoshop, first thing you can do is grab a picture. I have a picture right here off of Pinterest, and what we're gonna first wanna do is get rid of as much as the background as possible. I'm just gonna use this quick selection tool right here by clicking on the tool and then hitting select subject. And then um, once my outline is made, I'm just going to click the mask tool and boom, there we go. We have separated our subject from the rest of the image. Now I'm gonna come over here, right click the layer and convert this back to a smart object. I'm gonna hold option or alt if you're on PC and drag to duplicate the layer. And now we have two copies of our picture. I'm going to turn off the visibility of the bottom one and then come over here to this selection uh, selector tool. And then I'm just going to select around half of our subject's face right here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mask that again. So now you'll see we have around like, you know, a split image. And then what we're gonna do again is we're gonna convert this back to another smart object, uh, right, right clicking and clicking smart object. Basically why we have to do this is because Photoshop won't be able to apply some effects if it's not a smart object. Smart objects pretty much just nest and put everything together in one file that Photoshop can apply anything to. Now that we have our smart object, we're gonna come over here to filter and then we're gonna click blur and motion blur. Now you'll see if we have motion blur on, it creates this cool like motion blur, um, hence the name. Adjust the angle to uh, the direction that fits your image best. So in my case right here, like a, a tilted angle of like 19 to 20 works best. And then we're gonna increase this distance up to about 200-ish. Hit OK, and then you can go ahead and turn the bottom visibility back on. For our case picture, I want a lot of this left blur side to only be blur, so I don't want to be seeing any defined lines on the left side. So I'm actually going to grab my eraser tool simply, um, make sure I'm click on, make sure you click on the bottom layer. I'm going to click it. I'm going to turn it into a rasterized object in this order, so that we can erase it. And I'm just going to erase some of the edges just so that we have uh, only blur on this left side. Also make sure your eraser tool is at zero hardness and a really large value such as 300. Now that we are done with adjusting all of our image, we can go ahead and select both of our image layers by holding shift and hit the folder icon to turn it into a group. Here's a quick tip to non-destructive editing. Always make a copy of things just in case if you mess up down the line. So hit command D to create a copy of the group and then we can just turn off the visibility of the first group. Now I'm going to right click this top group and I'm just going to convert it all into one smart object. Now here comes for the radiant effect. We're gonna click on the adjustment layer right here and then we're going to hit gradient map, hence the name. And you'll see now it'll apply a basic gradient map. Here are all the gradients that Adobe has for you. There's some that you can mess around with that are kind of cool, but for our case scenario, we're just gonna go ahead and make our own. I'm just gonna select the standard black and white one the way you can actually make a gradient is by clicking on this plus icon and then you can just name it whatever you want it to be. So I'm gonna click on the standard black and white one and once you're selected on it, come back here to this gradient map um, icon and you'll see it brings up this nice little gradient editor where you can set the colors. Left side is white, right side is black. What we're gonna do is we're going to click in the middle to add another point and double click that to adjust the color. Now this is where you can be creative, have fun with it honestly, because this is really all the main effects going on right here. I usually like to start with a really hot pink color and then once you're set with it, you can hit OK, then continue clicking on the left to create more color tabs. Next, I'll usually go with a yellow and then just keep clicking. Uh, usually you only wanna stay around three colors, that like typically works best. Um, but you see we're kind of already creating this nice looking heat map going on right here. I might do a dark blue and then one last color before we hit white. I'll make everything this nice like slime green. So as you can see, if we adjust these values closer to the left, the brighter sides will become more affected by those colors and vice versa. And you can also drag and switch colors around for say if you don't like certain looks just to create different unique looks. And if you ever feel dissatisfied with the color, you can just double click it again and readjust it to make it more fitting. We now have a nice heat map gradient effect and then what you can do is you can hold shift and select both of your gradient map and your subject and then right click them and convert them both to a smart object and boom 
Now it's applied to this nice black image and we are ready to apply it to a t-shirt design. One last effect that I really think just ties this all together is creating some noise to it. Modern modern graphic design right now is really hot on blurs and noise. Hit your filter and then hit noise and then hit add noise. And I want you to zoom into your picture just so you can get a nice uh, view. Oh yeah, make sure you check the monochromatic box. And then we're going to increase this, this noise amount to around 23 honestly works pretty well right here. Once you're set with it, hit okay and boom. Now we have a nice grunge motion blur radiant heat effect. It's honestly really cool. Like I said, the colors are totally up to you. You can create looks that are totally unique to yours. And lastly, we can't have a finished effect without an overlay. I love to add overlays to all my stuff. Paper overlays specifically go great with this. So I'm just gonna drag this one I found off of Google and hit Command T to just scale it up really large. And then I'm going to change the blending mode to screen and just decrease the opacity a tad bit. And boom, just like that, that's how you create a nice looking gradient blur effect. You can use this for t-shirt designs, graphic posters, anything you're liking. And because these are two separate layers, you can even add text behind your design. You can add a text and then just simply drag it below your gradient layer and you know, just really cool stuff. And you know, just really cool stuff that you can do. This blur is completely separate. It's all transparent and overall just really great ways to just spice up your designs and make different work. Here is the final result. If you guys made it to the end of the video, thank you again so much for watching. Really, if you found any of this content useful or helpful, please be sure to smash the like button and subscribe. It means the world to this channel. Also, if you had any questions or concerns throughout the entirety of the video, please be sure to leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Follow us on Instagram at 11%prod. We'd love to see what you guys create. Once again, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.